If you are interested in, and serious about transforming your life and making the changes that you've been saying you're going to do for ages, really give coaching a try. It makes a huge, huge difference in the, uh, the trajectory and the path that you take in life and your success. And it's, I've made it so affordable, um, and there's really no reason. The consultation's free. The first session is $5. You really got nothing to lose. Um, my email's in the description. Uh, hit me up with an email, and we can set up the, the complimentary or free consultation, and then uh, the first session, and you could take it from there. Something that we confuse ourselves with is what is the purpose of life? We live our lives like the purpose is to arrive <coughs> to some magical destination. When I accomplish A, when I accomplish B, and whether that A is a new job, when I get the right girlfriend or boyfriend, or when I get the house, or when I graduate, we're always future living and saying, when I fix myself, then I'll be happy. When I become this, then I'll be happy. When I achieve that, oh, that is why would anyone want to live that way? You are, you are in, ensuring or guaranteeing that you're going to suffer. The moment you base your happiness or your well-being on a future external goal or even internal goal, whether that's enlightenment, you are going to suffer. Why not make the purpose of life growth? Are you growing? In nature, if a tree is not growing, it's dying. <clears throat> and so don't we want to always be growing? And that is what the reward is in itself. It's not arriving somewhere. It's not becoming uh, something special or something famous or rich. It's just growing in that continuous process of growth is its own reward. Now, the question is, and I think this is the problem where most people get hung up, how do we grow? In order to grow, you've got to make yourself feel uncomfortable. You've got to embrace discomfort, embrace failure, embrace rejection. And if you can't embrace it, that's okay. Just do it. And a lot of people in coaching, they, they will contact me. I want to accomplish this. I want to achieve that. I want to become more confident. Uh, I want to be more courageous. I want to take more risks. And many people think like there's a magic pill. I need to read the right book. I need to have the right recipe or the right formula. And part of the success in coaching is doing what we do is we make a plan and we start doing. And as you do, you start building the confidence. The courage comes afterwards. And again, that's a big, another big mistake people make is they feel they need to have the courage and confidence before they do the thing they fear, before they ask the girl out um, that they've been wanting to ask out for a while or the guy that they've been wanting to ask out or asking for a raise. No, now's not the time. Now's not the time. I, I don't feel it. Who cares how you feel? How you feel is so irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. What's important is what are you committed to? What are your actions? What are, your, what are you doing? So I, I work with a, a lot of my clients are artists. And a, a big mistake artists make is they wait until they feel inspired to make the music or to... Uh, paint the painting or to write. I have to feel inspired. I have to feel in the mood. Why do you have to feel inspired? The successful writers, the successful artists are the ones who approach it like a job. You wake up and you paint. You wake up, you write. You wake up, you sing. You do your craft. And in the doing of your craft, there's blood, sweat, and tears. It's not all fun, joy, and feel good. Why do we have to feel good? Feeling good limits us to such a degree or feeling in the mood. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to eat right when I feel, when I feel like it. I mean, what, that's, it's, it's so illogical and it's so backwards. And that's what limits us is we're dependent on how we feel. 
It's not about how you feel. It's about your commitment and your commitment to your growth, your commitment to your evolution. And the only way you do that is get your hands dirty. Blood, sweat, and tears. Make yourself, put yourself in situations to feel uncomfortable. And you start feeling better and better. And, and keep in mind, things are 10 times worse in our mind than in reality. If you ever had something, oh, I, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I'm feeling scared, I'm feeling scared, and then you do it, it's like, oh, that wasn't that big a deal. But we let that monkey mind become our slave master. And when people are comfort zone junkies, their world just shrinks and their comfort zone becomes their own prison. Why would you want a shrinking comfort zone that enslaves you? Oh, what are they going to think of me? What if I get rejected? What if they don't like it? What if uh, I fail? You're going to fail. You're going to get rejected. You're going to feel uncomfortable. Why is that a problem? Why? It's part of the recipe or it's part of the formula for success. You got to fail. You got to be uncomfortable. You got to get, you got to ruffle feathers. People aren't going to reject you, judge you, not like you. Why is that a problem? We have just been conditioned, we've conditioned ourselves from a very young age to be PPs. We're PPs. People pleasers, always worried about what are people going to think? What if they don't like me? What if I say the wrong thing? So what? You'll handle it. I love that phrase. You'll handle it. And it does get easier each time you handle it. It's not the end of the world. If things go wrong, the worst case scenario, you'll be able to handle it. And that's living a life like you're breaking free of the, the shackles. We just keep ourselves so trapped by fear. And when you think about it, what is it we're fearing? What's the worst thing that can happen? Death? You know, if you take that risk and ask that girl or guy out, if you ask for a raise or you go for a job that you think is out of your league and you don't get it, or you, you uh, put your work or art out there and people laugh at it, is death going to happen? Are you, you going to be homeless and out in the streets? Um, is everyone in the world going to abandon you? And that's how the mind works. The, the, the way the primitive brain, the monkey mind works, it tries to imagine the imagination every single possible thing that can go wrong. And we act, we use that as a reason not to do that which we fear. When that's not the, the design of it at all. The design of the mind in, you know, 10 million or 10,000 years ago, it was designed to protect us. Okay, what are the, we're going to go out for the hunt. What are the possible things that can go wrong? We might get eaten by a lion. Okay, we might get eaten by a lion. We need to then make a lot of noise or take a different route or bring proper protection. Another tribe might attack us. What can we, what can we do? And that's to stay within our, our territory. Or we might not have enough food. What can we do to prevent that? We can store some food and ha have a little bit of excess, grow some, some things in order to, um, uh, so we have enough food to get us through the tough times. Move our location. So your mind comes with everything that goes wrong in order to prepare you. And what do we do? We think it shuts us down. So if you are thinking about like, Asking someone out or trying out for something that you've been wanting to do for a long time and all these fears come up, find a way or something specific in which you can handle it. If you start a new job and you feel like you're the job you're in over your head, what can you do to prepare yourself, better prepare yourself to deal with those fears? Okay, I can read books to better prepare myself for the job. I can ask other people. I can practice. There's so many things, but 
take those fears and turn them around, flip them, and you to use them to your advantage instead of allowing them to, sh to shut you down. So every time you have a fear, the monkey mind, the primitive brain comes up with the fear and says, uh, you suck. You know, no, she's not going to want to go out with you. And then ask it and say something specific. Get it to, to instead of that black or white negative statement, ask it for something specific. So, monkey, what can I do to improve my odds to go out with, uh, in order for her to say yes? You telling me I suck and I'm a loser and she's not going to go out with me is not, is not doing either of us good. What is something specific? And then it might say, you could dress nicer. You could shave. You could um, go to the, start going to the gym so you feel um, some more confidence. Um, role play with somebody else on what you're going to say to her. There's all these things that you can do, but just telling us that we suck and have all these fears and that we're going to fail or things are going to be uncomfortable and then we go back in our shells is really, it's suffocating and stagnating. And what we want to do is we want to always be stretching our comfort zone. Not too far, in baby steps. Stretch Stretch a little more, stretch a little more, stretch a little more. And before you know it, you're just amazed at the things that you can achieve. I guess the theme of this video is being a comfort zone junkie just makes you a prisoner. And it's such a suffocating, limiting, regretful way to live. Okay, um, again, if you do want to work on these things and have someone to support you and encourage you and hold you accountable and make consistent progress uh, with coaching. Uh, hit me up, uh, my email address up in the comment or up in the description. And until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.